With this example, we will start to look at the very powerful graphing functionality of Excel. I'd like to break this topic into two parts. The first part is data representation, data plotting, including experimental data representation. And the second part will be the theoretical simulation, theoretical modeling. So this is a simple example of data plotting. These are data of falling leaves in a year, um, broken down by months in three different Indian cities. And I found the data on the internet from a Mr. Satyaji Singh. And although I don't know him, I give him my gratitude. And although I don't have confirmation from him, I'm assuming these data are all made up. They are, they are all fictional because um, these are just too accurate to be actual counted falling leaves. Um, so I really like these data because as you can tell, it, they are very large. Therefore, when they are represented in a table format, it is very difficult to really grasp the information. How do the leaves in different cities compare to each other? How do the falling leaves compare month to month? When you look at all these large numbers, it's very difficult for your brain to process that kind of information quickly. Therefore, a table is not the best representation format in this example. And we want to change that, transform that into a graph instead. Graphing is very easy in Excel. Let's see what's the fastest way to graph these data. I can simply highlight the information that I want to include in the, uh, in the graph and then go to insert and then here I have my chart options. Feel free to explore the different charts. Uh, for me, I'm going to start with a simple bar chart and even here I have more options. I can plot the data side by side like shown here or I can plot them in a stacked fashion. Normally when you plot a stacked bar chart, this is when you are also interested in the total sum of the data in addition to the individual data that you have. And also you can make them nicely in a 3D representation. So I'm going to do a simple 2D bar chart. So as you can see, this chart is pretty clear already. It automatically plotted here the different categories. In, uh, in our case, we have the, the 12 months as our category, as our horizontal axis, and then vertically that contains the actual data. So you can see how the different numbers of falling leaves change from month to month. And then also um, in comparison of different cities, the different colors of the bars um, are represent the different cities. So blue represents the falling leaves in Delhi, etc., etc. If you look over here, you can see there are different uh, other kind of cosmetic things you can do uh, to change the style of your chart. Again, feel free to Pick the one that pleases you the most. I probably don't want to show all these numbers on the bars. As you can see, they get really crowded together. Therefore, when I click on this plus sign here, you can see there are more options, what kind of elements you want to include or not include. Um, for example, I don't want to include the data labels, so I un untick this one. Um, and it's a good idea to include the chart title. So let me actually edit this to give it a proper title. There are other things you can change as well. For example, if you think the font is too small, you can click on this and then right click. You can change um, other things. But here uh, we can change the font to be give it a bigger font. OK. And let's see what we have here. Um, again, you can change the style and the color. And also here's a filter, which means that you don't have to present all the data at the same time. Um, for example, if I unclick this right here, and then I can just view the data by the different month. So as you can see, because I only clicked on January, February, and March, therefore currently my plot only uh, contains the data from these three months. And of course, if I com want to compare from Delhi to Mumbai instead of the Goa, I can unclick this one. And then here I only compare these two cities instead of all of them. Switch back. Also, if you want to 
move this chart to its own sheet so that it prints out nicely. You can right click and then move chart to its own sheet. So over here, as you can see, um, you have created a different sheet with only the, the chart and it looks nice. And also if you do the print preview, you will see that now the chart occupies the entire page of the paper. Now we've covered the basics. Let's talk about good practice. Once again, it is really not necessary to have these detailed numbers of leaves. So maybe we can uh, change this table to have the data represented not in individuals, but in the unit of say milliamps. So let me recreate this table right here. But now I'm going to calculate all these data divided by a million. And I'm going to copy and paste the data back, right click and then only values. And then let me get rid of this. I don't need that anymore. And let me show two decimal places. Well, actually I think one decimal place is good enough. So now I have to change the title because now these are data of the falling leaves, but in the unit of milliamps. So again, I can plot my bar chart, the same thing. All right, but now I do want to include axis title because now here I have to make a note that these are data in millions. I don't need this, so let me just delete this. I can represent that in the title as well. And of course I can send it to its own sheet. So the, the advantage of this chart over the previous one is that the previous one, it is difficult to conceive just how, how big these numbers are. But if you look at the chart two, it is very clear that these are given in milliamps. So a reader can easily tell, okay, so the highest is probably a little bit less than 20 millions. Um, so that's, in my opinion, a better practice than the previous one. And the last thing I want to try is to plot the same data from my new table uh, using a different chart type. So we've been doing the bar chart but let's see if we can do it in a different chart type. So from here, I'm going to pick probably not pie chart because this is going to look too busy for my pie chart, but um, there's a simple line chart. So from here, I am going to pick um, this kind looks fine because it shows the data point. Um, again, going to fix the title. And then again, I do want to add my axis, at least this one, to show that these are data in millions. And I don't need this. Get rid of that. And let me send this to its own sheet as well. Sheets. Oh, that's fine. So this one right here. Obviously, it's different than the bar chart. It is really personal preference which one you like better. In my opinion, I like this chart better uh, because I can, again, clearly see the different cities represented by the three different colors. I can read off the data from my uh, y-axis and I know that the unit is in millions. But I also can see the trend. I can see how the data change from month to month for different cities. So in my opinion, this is a better representation than the bar chart, but you're free to choose the one that you think represents the data the best. I want to add an uh, sort of appendix to my video, um, something that my student Bryson pointed out to me that I was not aware of before. This is again the, the first graph that I made, again showing all these very big numbers. Um, 
、uh, once again, I wanted to demonstrate the data in the unit of milliamps, and you can actually click on this right here, and then right click, and then you can pick the format axis. I was aware of formatting axis before, but、uh, I didn't realize that you can actually do this. You can display units in milliamps directly, and as a result, the y axis. Now automatically displays the data in milliamps. That is actually, in my opinion,、um, a faster way than trying to reformat the table and then graph the data in milliamps manually. So thank you, Bryson.